Welcome to the Silicon Valley Education Foundation's 10th Annual Pioneers in Purpose Celebration for Education. And now your host, NBC Bay Area's evening anchor, Jessica Aguirre. So nice to be with you here again. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here this evening. If you haven't wandered in, please do so. We want to get our program going. Welcome officially to the Silicon Valley Education Foundation's 10th annual Pioneers and a Purpose Celebration for Education. It's amazing, 10 years. It's really hard to comprehend the breadth of everything that Silicon Valley Education Foundation has done in just 10 years. But think about the strides that they've made here in Silicon Valley. Now, you have an amazing evening ahead of you. 10 years, traditional gift for 10 years is usually tin or aluminum. But we'd like to go with the first year anniversary gift, which is paper. And we'd like green paper. And we'd like it in the denominations of thousands tonight from you. <laughs> Certainly, it's a very big room, lots of big names for a very big night in education. Thank you so much for taking your evening and spending it with us. We're gathered here tonight to celebrate education and to recognize the important work that those who are game changers in public schools are making in our community. And at the very center of that, of course, we know when it comes to policy and advocacy and a focus on education and innovation in Silicon Valley and throughout the Bay Area, Silicon Valley Education Foundation has touched all of our lives and so many children. So, as you may know, in addition to my duties on the anchor desk, I also do an education show and uh, education segments entitled Class Action. My Class Action segment focuses on education. And actually, when I look around the room, I see a lot of my guests are here. Mike Kirst is here, he's been on my show. Tom Turlickson, obviously. But one of my most frequent guests and my go-to person when it comes to education and STEM is always Mohammed Chaudhry. He has been a mentor to me in the field of STEM and really taught me so much. Talk, we talk a lot. We talk about the achievement gap. We talk about technology. And we talk about how we're going to fill those jobs here in Silicon Valley of the future and fill the workforce and continue to be leaders in the world. What we know and what's become very apparent is that we do live in two Silicon Valleys. We've talked about this before. There's this Silicon Valley that we're in right now, filled with talented, smart, energetic people with a vision for the world and for our Bay Area, who are leading the charge. And then unfortunately, there is the other Silicon Valley, the one that kind of sits in the shadows where you have children who can't do math, who aren't reading at grade level, and who don't have the technology they need in the classroom to be able to move forward. The children don't have the resources they need to be able to excel. We're talking about schools. It's hard to believe it that we're here. But if you go into East Palo Alto, you'll see schools that don't have computers. Trust me, I've been there. You'll go into bathrooms where the paper holders are locked down. Locked down. So they don't have iPads. They barely have a sink. That's the kind of place we're living in. They don't have the access to the internet. Just recently in Pleasanton, they handed out computers and iPads and MacBook Pros to students who didn't have them. They were going into a laptop program and they didn't have access to those things. They were underprivileged kids and they were given free Wi-Fi access and computers. It's difficult. Less, last year, less than half of Silicon Valley high school graduates actually fulfilled the minimum required requirements needed to go to a four-year public university in California. Yesterday, I did an interview with Jana Napolitano, and she says that's one of the biggest impediments they have right now in the UC system, getting kids in who actually know their A through G requirements and what they need to get into college. The kids are stunned when they go to apply to the UC schools and figure out they haven't done in high school and they haven't completed the classrooms that they need. But there is good news. There is a change underfoot, and that push is toward excellence. And the Silicon Valley Education Foundation is at the helm. It's the only organization that advocates for equitable school policy. It provides programs in the areas where our students struggle the most, and it finds the best technology tools for both students and teachers. 
Tonight we're going to talk about a lot of important things. Mostly we're going to be talking about math and science that kids are so afraid of, but once they delve into it, they absolutely love. They discover a different world. They find out how connected math and science is to everything they do. If you talk to girls, I go out, I do a lot of talks with girls uh, about STEM, and they're marveled at the fact that the products they put in their hair, STEM related, that blow dryer you use and that flat iron, STEM related. And then when you talk to boys, they figure out, oh, all those games I play, those are all related to math. And that's where we have to make the connection. So, how does the Silicon Valley Education Foundation take students that are failing in math and science, students that many times have been told they can't do math or science, that they're not, they don't have the right smarts, they don't have what it takes? Well. They do it. They find the best technology, they find the best people, and they step up for them. They're advocates for these kids. We have a special guest with us this evening. Uh, our esteemed guest, Thomas Friedman, once wrote, in the world of ideas, to name something is to own it. And if you can name an issue, you can own that issue. Well, when it comes to helping kids, the Silicon Valley Education Foundation has a name for what it does, and it owns this issue. It's called Elevate Math, Elevate Science, and I'm going to show you how they do it. I would like to be some sort of engineer. Be a doctor. When I grow up, I want to be a geneticist. I want to work at Google. I'd like to go to Stanford and study pre-med. At the Silicon Valley Education Foundation, we are obsessed with preparing all students for college and careers. While we live in the most innovative place on earth, more than half of our students aren't prepared for the college entrance requirements. That's not acceptable. We want to make sure that all students have the opportunity and the resources they need to be the future innovators of the Valley. SVEF is really the nonprofit in Silicon Valley that is reaching out and supporting school districts like no other nonprofit. Because their goal is to really make sure that every student has the opportunity to be prepared for the 21st century, college and career ready. At SVEF, we have a unique approach. First, we work with school districts to ensure the right policies are in place so no students fall through the cracks. Secondly, we work with teachers to make sure they can truly innovate inside the classroom by providing blended learning experiences. And thirdly, we make sure students have everything they need to master the difficult subjects of science, technology, engineering, and math to provide that spark they need to take ownership of their educational experience. Before, I didn't know almost anything about slopes, but now that we're learning about it, it's really simple for me. I think it's really important because like every job, you need to know math. She's really enjoying it. She's having a great time. It's stimulating for her. She's excited about the things she's done and the progress that she's making. The way the program is set up, there are a lot of different entry points. So we have some things that are interactive. We have some group activities, physical activities, you know, more kinesthetic. We have the traditional paper and pencil things. We have research things. So there's a lot of different aspects for students to engage the concepts. Before this program, I wasn't really into science. It was kind of difficult for me. And after I got into the program, it helped. It was exciting. You learn a lot from this program. A lot of students come in with a mindset, oh, this is chemistry, it's intimidating, it's kind of scary. They see a bunch of letters, a bunch of numbers. It's very confusing. And a class like this where we can go a little bit slower, they're not as intimidated by it, and really allows them the opportunity to practice a little bit, really internalize it, and really do something with it where their confidence builds, and they're actually learning something here that just enhances their life down the line. If you don't have the opportunity to pass algebra, and biology by the end of your freshman year, ideally uh, by eighth grade, then the chances of you graduating from high school, college and career ready uh, is slim. Right now we have a unique opportunity to make sure we make a lasting impact on a future generation. As a community, we need to come together and give our time our talent, and our treasures, because imagine a Silicon Valley where all students are prepared for college and careers.
Now, doesn't watching that make you want to go back to science class? I want to elevate to science. I'd like to do a summer program and do it myself. All right, put your hands together, please, and help me welcoming Mohammed Chaudhry, the founder and CEO of the Silicon Valley Education Foundation. Good evening. I am Mohammed Chaudhry, the CEO of the Silicon Valley Education Foundation. And I want to thank you all for joining us this evening. We have an exciting program tonight. But first, I'd like to give a round of applause to our two main honorees tonight, Mike Splinter and Tom Friedman. Please give them a round of applause. At SVEF, we are proud to be a community-based organization. We are proud to serve Silicon Valley students and educators, and we cannot do it without partners. I'd like to ask all the educators in the room of the 55 school districts in Silicon Valley to please stand up and take a bow as well. It also takes partnerships with lots of nonprofits in the community, like the San Francisco 49ers Foundation and Joanne Pasternak, the Hispanic Foundation of Silicon Valley and Ron Gonzalez, West Ed and Neil Finkelstein, Kraus Center for Innovation, New School Venture Fund, and the College Board. It's a great organization working with us every day to make sure all students are ready for college and careers. Please give them a round of applause. I'd also like to highlight some of our staunchest corporate partners, such as PwC and SanDisk, who has been giving us their time by sending teams of volunteers to our classrooms for the past three years. The San Francisco 49ers and Applied Materials, who have contributed their talent in developing great programs in science, technology, engineering, and math, which you'll hear about in a few minutes. And all of our sponsors here tonight and donors who have contributed their treasure of supporting children of Silicon Valley. Give yourselves a round of applause. Each of these organizations have demonstrated that they understand the importance of being a part of and giving back to the community. We love doing what we do to support our students and educators, and we love bringing the community together to support our students and educators. Thank you and enjoy the show. And we have quite the show for you in just a little bit. Now, for the past 10 years, your support has allowed Silicon Valley Education Foundation to focus on critical areas like the adoption of courses required for college. It's super important. And career readiness throughout California high schools. So for that, we want to give a special thank you to D. John Miller. He's the founder and CEO of DJM Capital Partners. And he's been really a longtime champion for the adoption of these courses. John has been critical in bringing student adoption rates in Silicon Valley from 13% of students that were taking AG default courses to over 75%. That's a huge increase. Now to help us really understand what that number means, I want you to watch this video. I honestly don't know how he does it wakes up at two in the morning to go to work, comes to practice at six in the morning, and then is in class fully focused and learning and getting A's and B's in, in an AP class. The A to G requirements are the requirements to be able to qualify to get into the University of California. If students don't know about them, they may go through their high school career, think they're going to be able to go to a UC, and then don't qualify to get in. The A to G requirements is that goal that you know you want to get to, so you have to push yourself there. If you don't have a goal, then what are you running for? Imagine a community where all our students are prepared for college and careers. I've been on this track and I have had my teacher advisor since my sophomore year and he has been able to keep me on track by letting me know what classes I need to take, what grades I need to get. Do not like math. <laughs> All right. I would describe Carrie as a bullion. 
attacking every job put in front of her with gusto. What this initiative does is to essentially reduce the achievement gap, give students in our community the opportunity to compete, to thrive. When you look at the, the sheer volume of people who are getting jobs versus who aren't getting jobs, and you look at that data, ultimately it's college educated folks. A to G is that. The beauty of A to G is that students who maybe in the past haven't had access to going to a four-year UC college now have access to it. When I first came to Branham, academics was not my type priority. So I didn't know about A to G, but my counselors did, and they made sure that I took those necessary courses to get to college. The more we can have high expectations for all of our kids, the better prepared they're going to be for when they leave us. You know? I was a little concerned when he said he wanted to take AP Lit. I thought, okay, this is going to be a stretch for you, but he's such a hard worker and he's such a positive person. I was never going to tell him, you can't do this. I did tell him, hey, you know, if you want to take it, I'll meet you halfway. I talk to our kids and I get to listen to their stories and I get to see them before they knew they had opportunities and then I get to talk to them afterwards and I get to see that growth and so I know what we're doing is making a huge impact in the lives of our students. Silicon Valley needs to innovate in education as it has done in cell phones, as it has done in search engines, as it has done in transistors and microchips. So not one child falls through the cracks due to a lack of trying, due to a lack of opportunity. That's a Silicon Valley we can all be proud of. When I look at the A through G requirements, I think those should be the measuring tool for schools. Because Kehinde has had the opportunity to take A through G classes, I have no doubt that he'll be very, very successful. So I want to start my own business, not work for a business, but start my own. Well, I want to go to either USC or UC Berkeley, and I want to study to be a teacher. My hopes for Carrie is that she has a very successful career in college playing the sport she loves, volleyball. Carrie's going to the University of the Pacific, and that's where she'll be making her moves. Our students have many different needs, many learning styles, and we're trying to meet the needs of every single student. So that costs money over and above what the state or the fed, federal government might give us for public funds. I think we all are very appreciative of anyone who helps us. And I think it's, it's good for our students to know that the greater world out there really cares about them. We've been given so many gifts just by virtue of where we were born. I think we all have a responsibility to give back. Thank you for everything you're doing. Silicon Valley Education Foundation is making a difference. Thanks. I just want to thank you guys really much because that what you guys have done has really made a significant impact in my life and in other students' lives as well. So thank you. And a big thank you to D. John Miller for all of his efforts as well. Okay, in today's light speed world, young students need, need more than ever a playground to help them nurture their high-tech skills that one day could change all of our lives. And to address that, we are proud to work with the 49ers Foundation and Chevron and to open the 49ers STEM Leadership Institute. It is so cool. Watch. When we broke ground on Levi Stadium 26 months ago, an idea started germinating about doing something really significant in the community, commensurate with when we were cutting the ribbon on Levi Stadium. And we went through a number of ideas, but the item that really resonated with our ownership and with the 49ers Foundation, our mission, was taking outstanding kids who are under-resourced and helping them to have an opportunity to become absolutely exceptional and to do amazing things in their life. Our family has always been interested in education. My father-in-law, Ed Bartolo Sr., always felt like that if you could give people an education, they could make a way for themselves and their lives. And the 49ers Foundation mission has been to keep kids safe on track and in school. My mother was a school teacher. My father was the son of Italian immigrants. They always thought that education could level the playing field with at-risk children that were disadvantaged and didn't have the wherewithal. Once you enable them to get an education, it's an even playing field. The STEM Institute is really important to the 49ers because it just fits with the mission of the 49ers Foundation, which is to keep kids safe on track in school. One, two, three, go. There we go. 
the STEM Leadership Institute will provide for 60 students a year from 7th grade all the way to 12th grade to prepare them to be our future innovators, our future leaders in the world of technology, in the, in the world of science, in the world of engineering and math. This institute is going to prepare them by giving them real world experience. I'm actually extremely excited. The STEM program is something special. Like, you can't really find it anywhere else. It ties what they're learning in school in mathematics and science to actual real life work that they're going to be doing uh, in the community. It's a way to explore like what's out there and what the world can offer me. It's I can learn so much more than I could in a regular classroom. Right now we're um, working on like a catapult to shoot marshmallows, aka the football, into a goalpost. Yeah! I think the, the most important thing to know for today is what the 49ers are doing and their commitment to STEM education in the region. I think it speaks to a larger initiative from the team's perspective of how important we really view educating kids and our understanding for the importance of STEM and the opportunities that it gives kids. This is a huge investment, a $40 million collaboration with Chevron to bring STEM education to kids that wouldn't otherwise have it. We have the best and the brightest kids here. All we need to do is give them the tools. The 49ers recognize that. They're fantastic community partners, and they're focused on all the right things. Chevron hires engineers, scientists. It's the lifeblood of our company. And so for us to have a chance to invest in STEM education is very natural because it helps create the leaders and the future uh, engineers, scientists, technologists. The coordination between the 49ers and Chevron, the Silicon Valley Ed Foundation, the school district, I've never seen anything like it before. It was so many brilliant people working together to make something so important for children come alive. It's just been it's been such an honor to be part of. Today we are celebrating the scholars of the class of 2020. The students who have joined us are the ones who are admitted into the first class of the STEM Leadership Institute. They will be graduating high school in 2020 and our hope is that they will go on to major in STEM related areas and that they'll go on to have a STEM related career as well. Go So our next guest our next speaker is someone who took a baseball phrase and turned it into a football reality. If you build it, they will come. And boy, have we. 68,000 plus people have been cramming in at every game at the new Levi's Stadium. And is that an engineering STEM work of magic? Yes or no, right? Under the leadership of John York and his wife, Denise DeBartolo, the 49ers community outreach programs have flourished and they've grown tremendously. But the 49ers STEM Leadership Institute is just one of several programs for underserved youth funded by the 49ers Foundation. And who better to tell us more about it, their goals and what it means to them is the San Francisco 49ers himself. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. John York. Thank you very much. For 23 years, the 49ers Foundation mission is to keep kids safe, on track, and, and in school. Over this time, the 49ers Foundation supported our community programs with over $26 million, with $9 million in the last three years. The support always goes to underserved youth bringing those kids up to a level where they can live and contribute actively in the community. As the 49ers planned their move to Levi's Stadium in Silicon Valley, the 49ers searched for a way to be impactful, to bring something new to youth through education. This decision was made to expose youth to STEM in two ways. First, and these names are long, so bear with me. The, DeBartolo, the Denise DeBartolo York Educational Center at the 49ers Museum, presented by Sony with the Chevron STEM Zone. Here, 20,000 kids are exposed to STEM, free, with the Science Behind Football program throughout the stadium and the Education Center. This is planting the STEM seed in a four hour time period. Second, the 49ers STEM Leadership Institute's 
Chevron STEM Zone at Cabrilla Middle School, partnering with the Silicon Valley Education Foundation and the Santa Clara Unified School District. Here, initially 67th graders were selected based on their interest in STEM and in their science and math grades. This program will grow to grades seven through 12 over time. These STEM students receive 320 additional hours of STEM, producing future leaders for our community and our country. This is germinating the seed of STEM to produce future leaders. The STEM Institute's benchmark is to track these initial seventh graders and those coming after them to see the impact on their AP calculus scores in their junior year of high school. Presently, about 3% pass the AP calculus test in Santa Clara. And the goal is to see that more than 20% of the students are passing. And this is the initial year for the STEM Institute to start things, the 49ers Foundation and Chevron have each contributed $2 million. This is about 20% of the need to be self-sustaining. So look out for my phone call. I'll be calling you. And if this interests you and you want to support this STEM program, please give me a call. We're very proud to do this with the Silicon Valley Education Foundation, and Mohammed Chowdhury has been terrific, so thank you. This is John York, everyone. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you for your leadership on all of this. So, would you like to know how to make a football? Do you want to know what the physics of a perfect kick are? Or is, pardon me? Um, well, we have to go inside the classroom to check it out. Look. The assignment we were given was to build a bridge that fit the dimensions with toothpicks and foam pieces to put them together, and it had to stand up. You take all the pieces, kind of like building a car, and you put them all together, and boom, you have a bridge. I think it's teaching us engineering, but also like doing all the math to figure out the correct um, amount of sticks you would need. Seven and a half to six left. The reality is that math, pure math, isn't used very often, and pure engineering and pure science isn't used. And so this particular project was asking them to combine those skills, looking at geometry and looking at some basic physics, construction engineering, um, math as well as real life skills in terms of budgeting and proposing something, you know, what do I want to do and can I actually execute what I'm proposing that I'm gonna do. So this group meets the 24 by 12. It looks like a viable bridge. We won! For the Lego Robotics, um, we have to build this robot. We make it do certain challenges and program the robot to do it. Basically what they're doing is taking Legos that we've all played with at some point or another, and they're learning how to create structures with them and link them to a computer where that computer can then be programmed to control that robot remotely. Half of them are sort of building the Legos and putting together the actual challenge board. Others are learning how to code and so that they can program their robots to do something. And then the others are researching their topic so that they will have a solution to present for their project. What's really neat is that they've formed these teams that they've chosen for themselves and they're learning along with each other. You know, how do I build things? How do I make it look aesthetically pleasing? As well as how do I technically program it in a way that it has a function to it? What I enjoy most of, of being in this program is that we have different kids from all around the district and we get to explore most things that we can't do if we weren't in the STEM program. You can sort of work with people who have the same passion as you. I found a lot of people that have like common interests and we all kind of want to do similar things, so it's really nice. 
I think some really key aspects of our program is that it's a cohort model. So these students are learning science, technology, engineering, math together for the next six years. And having that core group of people and colleagues eventually that you know and trust and can grow with is really important. Being in this program is one of the best decisions I've made. And it's just a really fun opportunity and I'm glad I joined. Join me in welcoming some of our STEM Leadership Institute students. All right, we have with us today Hawk, Jimena, and Jamie. Thank you for being here with us today. Very exciting. You guys are having such a great time. Tell me what's been the best thing so far for you, Hawk. Well, for me, probably it's been having all this access to all these technology that we get to work with. And just like the Lego robotics, it's really fun how we just get to build our own robot and program it to do different things. Now, I hear you're building a robotic car. Is that true? Yes, we have to build a robot to do different challenges. And the more challenges we do, the more points we get. So has Elon Musk called you yet to see if you want to work for him? <laughs> Maybe he's here. We can, we'll, we'll talk to him, okay, for you. All right. Jamie. Uh, let's talk to you a little bit about when you go to this, um, the STEM Institute, were you a little nervous at the beginning and what's been your impression of it now, meeting all these new friends, knowing that you're going to be with him for all this time, what do you like about it the most? It's so much fun meeting new people and trying new things we weren't able to do when we were just at normal classrooms. Near the STEM program, we were able to do a lot more things. And it's nice to be with a bunch of smart people too, having fun, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So, Jimena. Are you think you're going to be able to go all six years without getting sick of these two? Well, actually, they're kind of my, well, they actually are my best friends, and I don't, nice. I don't think that I would trade them for anything else. Learning math and making new friendships. Okay, so we are going to do something now. You see all these people out here in the audience? These are some of the top people in Silicon Valley, some of the smartest people that we have. We're talking about movers and shakers. Look around, take a good look at them, see what you think. All right, we're about to take them down. All right, are you ready to outsmart the smartest people in the room? Yeah. Oh yes you are, okay. We've done this before, we have our little game show, but this year it's gonna be different. We are gonna have a STEM showdown this year. Okay. Every year during this time, we kind of play our game, uh, and we call it the STEM Stumpers Game Show. And unfortunately, if you've been here before, you know that you people have always lost, and the kids have always won, because the kids are super smart. This year, though, the team says, the grown-up team says, it's got what it takes. They are ready. They've got some repeats from before. One of them is Burton. He's telling me this time he's going to get the answer right. But he'll be out here in a second. Um, so this year we're gonna do a little bit different. So now let's have, we're gonna start with our players, the rest of our players for the, ready? Say it with me. STEM Showdown! This is the red team, and it is made up of, you already met Jamie and Hawk and Jimena. We welcome Isaac wearing Google Glass for the day. I'll tell you more about that. There's Meta and Jonathan. Give it up for red team. Okay, now we have our executive grown team. It has old in here, but I skipped that, okay? <laughs> Please help me in welcoming Mr. John York, Court Chairman of the San Francisco 49ers and a very good sport for the night. <laughs> Patty Hatter, SVP of Operations and CIO of McAfee. <laughs> Burton Goldfield, CEO of Trinet. These are repeat players. <laughs> Maria Admanson, Global Chair of Technology at Edelman. D. John Miller, CEO of DGM Capitals. And as you'll see, Mr. Miller is also sporting Google Glass. 
You look very elegant in that. Very. Be careful where you look, though, because we can all see what you're looking at. <laughs> so I'd just be careful if I were you. All right. And also, our last uh, contestant is Fayaz Sherpawala, SVP at Cisco. Okay, we also need some assistance for our STEM showdown. We need Katie McCown and Jennifer Lee, two of the talented teachers you saw the video from the STEM Leadership Institute. They're gonna be helping us with the game. So welcome out the ladies. Okay, today we're gonna have three challenges. It's gonna be a little different, three challenges. It's kind of like a combination of Pictionary and Minute to Win a Game. So it's gonna be really fun. Whoever gets the most points and wins the most challenges actually is declared the victor in all of this. Uh, and you saw we have Isaac with his Google Glass. Isaac, wave to everyone so they see you. Okay, and we have Mr. Miller with his Google Glass as well. And what you're gonna do is whatever they're seeing in their Google Glass, you'll be able to see on the screen. So Mr. Miller, you can look around, see? You're looking at the... <laughs> and then Isaac, look around and show them what you're seeing. Okay. And we have to, th we have to thank... Uh, um, crowd optic Google Glass for providing this feed for us. Okay, all right, are we ready, people? You don't seem excited. Okay. Our first challenge is called Slice It Up. Slice It Up. All right, representing the red team again in Slice It Up, it will be Isaac, Jonathan, and Jimena. Go, you stay where you are, the rest of the team go behind. Representing the blue team, John York, Maria Edmondson, and John Miller. All right, step on up over here. Okay, this is how, this is how the game is gonna be played, folks. The goal here is to divide the circle into as many pieces as you can, but you can only use four straight lines, okay? Divide the circle into as many pieces or slices as you can using only four straight lines. You will have only 30 seconds to do that. If you have to start over again because you messed up, you can flip over another paper. Isaac, I'm watching you. Don't start yet. Okay, the team with the most pieces starts. Don't be conferring before you three. No conferring, no conferring. Wait, wait, wait. Ready, on your mark, get set, go! like an astrological chart somehow. All right, let's see. Well, we have one of our teachers. Will you uh, count up the uh, slices for us? Okay. 11 for Team Red. That's good. Let's see how Team Blue fared. Nine. Team Red's the winner. Okay, let's move on to our next one. The next challenge is called Blow It Up. Blow It Up. Animation? Okay. Uh, for that, I'm gonna need Hawk, Jamie, and Meta. Come on down! Or get behind your table. Okay, for this challenge, I need Fayaz, Burton, and Patty. Burton, come on! This is your chance to redeem yourself! Go behind the table, let's go! Behind the table, behind the table. Now this game is definitely a little bit harder, unless you're a mad scientist. Uh, you kind of look like a mad scientist to me, but that's a good thing, right? Okay. Now, this game, you have a minute for this game. You have to blow up that balloon, you have to blow up a balloon on your table to the biggest size possible, and you have to use the tools, the liquids, and the reagents found on your table, okay? That's what you have to do. Let me say it again. Blow up a balloon to the biggest size possible using the tools, liquids, and reagents found on your table. You just have to do one. You have those in case you fail. But you blow up the balloon to the biggest balloon. 
Of course, the team with the biggest balloon wins. But that's how it is in life, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, are you guys ready? No burning down the hotel. Okay, all right. Are you ready? On your mark, go! I think it goes to Team Red, so they're two to, two to zero. Okay, final challenge. This is gonna be really fun. This is called Take Flight. Animation, okay. So this is about engineering. We're gonna be testing everyone's engineering skills. We are gonna make something simple that we've all done before. We're gonna make paper airplanes, okay? For this one, we're gonna need every player on the team. So all of our executives over here, all the kids over there, okay? This game though has two phases. The first phase, we're gonna spend a minute folding as many paper airplanes as you guys can do, okay? As many as you can. Fast fingers, fast fingers. Look at these guys, all right? We're gonna be looking at your Google Glass, Isaac, so make sure you let us see a good thing, okay? So, first phase, folding the paper airplanes. Second phase, we're gonna throw them at you. So, get ready. All right, so let's start by our first phase. Ready? And, ready? Get your paper closer to you. <laughs> well, distribute them, no? <laughs> get set, ready. Go! Fold, fold, fold! You're being overly neat! Go, go, go! Oh! Oh, Mr. Miller, you're surprisingly good at this! I see a lot of blue paper! but that has a lot of planes. <laughs> okay, phase two. Team, you're gonna look and you're gonna pick which are your uh, best planes. You need to look and see which are your three best airplanes, okay? Check out your material and guys decide which are your three best planes, okay? We only have a few seconds for this. Okay. 
Pick your three best planes. And now our Google Glass wearers are gonna come out. So Isaac, you've got your three best planes? John, you've got your three best planes? Three. Okay, okay, ready? Step on up. And we're gonna see how the planes fly. We're gonna take them one at a time, and you're gonna be able to see what they see with their Google Glass as they send out the planes hurtling towards you. Now, when a red plane comes towards you, okay, you stand up if it's near you so that we can gauge the distance. So we're gonna start with the red team first, then we'll do the blue team. And if the team, if the plane comes near you, you stand up so we can see the distance. And in the end, we'll see which plane went the farthest, okay? And then once, if another plane goes past you, you can sit down. Okay, are we ready? Isaac, you're the man. Come on up. Oh. So look at the audience and send it out there. Woo! All right, stand up! Excellent! Good one. Oh, Mr. York, will you be doing the plane throwing? All right. We're ready for you. Oh! I don't think he's gonna be the quarterback, I'm just saying. Okay, Isaac. Do it again, mister. This is like duck and cover. It's like an earthquake drill. If you see it coming towards you, go down. Okay. Go, Isaac. Oh, nice! <laughs> Mrs. Splinter is right where the plane is. Thank you. Yay! All right, John. Time to really go. I know you can do it this time. Not even the backup quarterback. <laughs> okay. Last one, Isaac. Oh. Where'd it go? Isaac! Woo! Okay, blue team. Have you been put on the, uh, on the disabled list? Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is it. Okay. some of your colleagues, this is where you can throw the airplanes at them as well. Pick someone who's really bugged you. Ready, set, go! <laughs> Check it out on the Google Glass. Do the Google Glass so they can see it. More, more, more excitement. Don't be afraid of them. Hammer them with the airplane. John, you really keep hitting the teleprompter. I don't know what's going on. Really, thank you so much to our executives who participated with such good humor. Thank you again. Okay, so you can clearly see the importance of what Silicon Valley Education Foundation is doing. Now we've had fun, now it's time. Remember I talked about paper, we had blue paper and red paper, now I wanna talk to you about green paper. Because being able to provide these kids with what the skills that they learned here is what we're doing here tonight. These young kids are why we're focusing on education. And when we nurture their curiosity, 
their willingness to learn and engage them in fun activities like this, we start seeing what they can do. And you see real skills develop, skills that will help our community move forward. So I want to show you a little bit about what Elevate Math and Science can do and your part in that. Let's look at the numbers and show you in perspective what your participation tonight could do. $15,000 would fund an Elevate classroom over the summer. $5,000 sends 500 students on a field trip to a college like Stanford or San Jose State or Santa Clara, okay, a university of the Pacific. Do you remember when you went to college for the first time and saw that? If you can see it, you can do it. And that's what this is about. $2,500 supports 10 college nights for our Elevate program. And $1,000 funds classroom supplies for 40 Elevate students. $500 funds a student in the summer Elevate program. So I know we've had a lot of stuff going on, but this is the really important part of the program. This is why we're here, and this is the part you really need to focus on. We want to be able to provide them with the money they need. So this is our call to action. Join us in making Elevate Math and Science possible for more students. You have some runners here in the room that are wearing those glow, glow necklaces. If you raise your hand and tell them that you would like to make a donation, they will come running over to you. There, we've got a hand up right there. Thank you. First one up of the night, you're our hero. Raise your hands and they will come over. You don't have to write a check. They've got a fancy little credit card swipe right at your table. You can put it on your plastic. This is what we need. So the GLOW people will be walking around. Please join me. How many of you are willing to make a contribution this evening? Please put up your hands for us. We need for you to step up so that we can step up to math as well. Thank you. Right here on the front table, table 11, thank you so much for your contributions. Now think about it. If you have a table of 10 people and everybody gives $150, that would be amazing. You would be able to pay right there to send an Elevate class over the summer, okay? So college for a lot of kids is a pipe dream. Can I see some hands up at the tables? Right over here at this table, help us raise money anywhere from $500 to $15,000 would make a huge difference for us this evening. So again, we have our runners walking around with our glow necklaces. They're happy to come over to your tables, make a difference tonight, and help us. Welcome to UC Santa Cruz. The campus tour is just to have the students see what college life is, to make them look at what they might be in a few years. We are currently located in Cal College, uh, and the theme for this college is the pursuit of truth and the company of friends. We have 2,000 acres of land, so there's a ton of hiking trails and upper campus. It is an eye-opener for a lot of these kids. Uh, most of them have not gone out of their own little neighborhoods in San Jose. Organizations like SVEF has given these kids a chance to see that this is something that they could be doing in five years. Here in the humanities, you have a program called International Playhouse. As a psych major, you go into these labs and you'll participate in the experiments. And so within the art department, we have art, theater, film and digital media, which like teaches you how to make movies and films and stuff like that. And then if you're studying science courses, it might be in this building, this is Team and Labs. It is a program that already anticipates they're going to college. So they know that they have been chosen and they are in that group of kids that we are investing on to make it to college. This college was actually pretty good consideration for me. I never really planned out many of colleges. This is like the first one I ever visited. Start thinking about earlier, what are you going to do? So we can get a head on college. This is our time to tell students who don't necessarily have that kind of push from other places in their life. This is the time for us to step up and say, 
it is an option. It is something that can be done. Now that was a little trip down memory lane, I'm sure for all of you, that first visit to college. But for these students, it really is an eye opener. A lot of kids don't think they can make it to college, but Silicon Valley Education Foundation allows them to see that it is really a possibility for them. It's part of our Ele Elevate program. And it really allows them to see that they have the opportunity to move forward with their lives. So big round of applause for the students who participated in that and the teachers that are working every day to help get them there. Okay, I see you have your food. So it's time for me to sit down and let you eat in peace. Uh, I do want one little quick business. The silent auction is still going on. There's, the table has been moved into this room. Lots of great things going on there, so we want you to go and check it out and make a bid. And we are, of course, still taking donations. We're gonna keep asking you throughout the night to open up your hearts and your pocketbooks to the Silicon Valley Education Foundation so I can keep taking kids to college, keep kids learning about science, technology, and math, and all of that. There's also a remit envelope on your table uh, that if you hold it up, one of our folks will come over with their glow-in-the-dark necklace, and they'll be happy to take care of that. In the meantime, please enjoy your dinner. <laughs>